Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So it's been well over half a decade since people have been able to play Crota's End, unless you stepped back into Destiny 1 at some point like I did. If you're going to jump into the remastered version of Crota's End tomorrow, I think you might well benefit more from it if you at least understood the story of the expansion it's attached to, the raid itself, and why it's such a big deal. This video is going to help you do just that. It's going to be the most basic introduction to the lore of the raid, so that tomorrow you know what's going on. I'll be following up with some more complete videos on the story and all of its characters that are so central to this raid later on. For now though, this is going to be just a basic summary of the plot behind the raid and everything that you might want to know for day one. But first, this video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, with over 2,000 tanks, planes, copters, and ships from the past 100 years in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. You can play with nothing more than a mouse and keyboard thanks to the game's intuitive controls. Every vehicle is exquisitely detailed for the most immersive possible combat experience in glorious 4K with authentic sound effects for every vehicle. But if you want, you can also customize your vehicles and apply hundreds of camos, equipment, and decoration items. Which is great if you're like me and you just want to add all the things on top of your tank. You can play this now for free on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, or the last-gen consoles. Go register with my link now down in the description and you'll get a large free bonus pack for using that link, including multiple premium vehicles, boosters, and more. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. I guess we should really start with this. Who is Crota? Well, he's the first son of Oryx, the Taken King, and formerly greatest of the Hive Gods. Whilst we would only hear a few words about him in the vanilla campaign of Destiny 1 and a few of its missions, Crota's story in the wider world of Destiny would loom large well before our time. Crota was, in many instances originally, a disappointment to his father, Oryx, the Taken King. The greatest of the Hive Gods at a time realized that his throne world was under assault. Vex had begun to invade it through a portal that had been carved by Crota. You can also thank Savathun for that one, by the way. She's the one that helped to set up such circumstances. Oryx's last words, as best we know to his disappointing son, were, My son, this is your punishment. Come home glorious, or die forgotten. Crota was then cast into the Vex gate network. To the best of our knowledge, Crota would rend his way through worlds untold, and would do just as his father had commanded, becoming a legendary demon and slaughtering countless peoples in the name of Oryx. Crota raised temples to the Taken King as he began to understand why his father had punished his weakness in that time and in the way that he had. For a long time, Crota would act then as an expansive part of the blood of Oryx, one of the greatest tithers that Oryx had ever known. And when it came to the invasion of Sol, Crota would be the tip of his father's spear and would lead the charge against the enemies of the Hive and by extension the Witness. Eventually, the Hive would make their way to the Sol system and their Crota would conquer the moon. Luna was hollowed out and the massive depths in proximity to Nezarek's fallen pyramid were conquered by Crota and his brood who began to focus their efforts on that region of the Ocean of Storms. Within the crust of the moon, the Hive would begin to create a massive subterranean fortress known as the Hellmouth. This would be the base of Crota's power in the Material Plane, and it would be the place where he would eventually strike out at Earth if the Hive's plans came to fruition. The Guardians of the City Age were mostly oblivious to these plans, these expansions, and these actions by the Hive, and would have plans of their own. Plans of expanding back into the system that humanity had once laid claim to. And under the banner of the Cormorant Seal, thousands of Guardians would march upon the moon in force. But they did not know about the marshalling Hive armies beneath the surface of the moon. 
and when that army of thousands of guardians arrived to reclaim the moon, they were greeted by the horde of Crota. The son of Oryx and Eater of Hope strode out across the field of battle that day and wielded the only gift that his father had ever given him, his sword, the Darkest Edge. Reports from the Battle of Mare Ibrium are scant and often incomplete, but what we do know is that where the sword of Crota fell, it cracked and ruptured the surface of the moon itself. Those cracks can still be seen now, great fissures left in the moon's surface by Crota's rage and hate. In this time and place, Crota was all but immortal, and his butchery of the Guardian army was relentless. At the Battle of Mare Ibrium, many famed Guardians met their end, but perhaps the most consequential death of them all was the death of the Titan of a mountainous spirit, Wei Ning. She was shattered by Crota, her body impaled on his blade. There was one Guardian who beheld this moment from a distant camp, it was a vision showed to her by the wizard that she tortured for information. Her name was Ariana III, and she was Waning's lover. At first, she believed that the wizard spewed nothing but lies. But as news came of the retreat from Mare Ibrium, it would soon become clear that that was not the case. As the surviving Guardian forces routed and returned to the Lost City, the failed effort to retake their moon would not be known as the Battle of Mare Ibrium. It would live in infamy by another name, the Great Disaster. It left the city vulnerable, the Guardian Orders fractured, and some amongst their number grew so desperate that they would do anything for even a chance of revenge. But that would not come easily. The Vanguard, in an effort to restrict any further casualties, would declare that all cis lunar operations would no longer have Vanguard support. If Ariana wanted her revenge, she would have to claim it without the assistance of the Guardian Orders and Vanguard Command at large. Luckily, she was not alone in her cause. Seeing the suffering that had been unleashed by Crota, her friend, the hunter, Eris Morn, would agree to assist her. With no official channels left to ask for aid in such a mission, they needed to go to someone far more unorthodox. And so it was that they sought out Toland, the so-called Shattered One. Toland was exiled from the tower for his supposed madness and his obsession with the Hive. He had long attempted to convince his fellow guardians of the merit of the sword logic. Now, after the great disaster, he had found a new opportunity to acquire further knowledge that he desired, an opportunity that walked in the door at the same time as Eris Morn and Ariana III. He agreed to assist their fire team in their quest to avenge Wei Ning and the other guardians that had fallen that day. His real purpose for exploring such a realm of the Hive would be far more self-serving and he would not reveal it until it was all over. Regardless, with a Scholar of the Hive in tow, Eris Morn and Ariana III would assemble a fire team, including the likes of the Hunters Sai Mota and Omar Ragar, and the Titan Vel Talo. Together, they would be known as the first Crota fire team. They would descend upon the moon with vengeance in their hearts and fire in their eyes. But they were not successful. As the saying goes, six of us went down into the pit. Only one crawled out. Despite each of the guardians fighting valiantly, all of them would fall to the forces of Crota, the son of Oryx. All except for one, Eris. Her ghost, Briar, would sacrifice herself to ensure that Eris had one chance of survival. With that chance, Eris survived. But she lost so much in that moment. Her ghost, her light, even her sight. 
but there was one thing she still had left. She would clutch a shard of Ahamkara bone in her fist. She had taken it with her, a trophy from the Great Hunt. With this moment, a bargain was struck. Eris would claw back her sight by taking the eyes of an acolyte. She would survive supposedly for centuries within the Hellmouth, awaiting a chance to escape. And when she found it, she crawled out. Her goal was now unchanged, though she herself was. She returned to the last city and was hell-bent once more on defeating Crota and his brood. And the time of her return could not have been more important, for Crota too was rising once more. This leads us to the beginning of Destiny's very first expansion, The Dark Below. Whilst the story of this expansion's campaign is often seen as relatively poor and with good reason, the lore and story surrounding the raid has been one of the greatest and most resounding stories in all of Destiny's history. It's been expanded significantly over the time of the Taken King, Shadowkeep, Witch Queen, and the Season of the Witch itself. There are many other outings in Destiny's lore that have expanded on the tale that is told within the raid of the dark below, Crota's End. It is a story that plays out as a tragedy with some kind of resounding success at the end. A tale of three acts. The tragic tale of that first fire team to face Crota. The tenacious reprisal of Eris Morn as we fought with her to banish Crota back into his throne world. And our victory as we ventured into the dark below and slew this monster in his own lair. This story is so important to Destiny because not only is it our first real deep look into the Hive, their story and their power, but it set in motion a chain of events that would see everything unfolding in every encounter we had with the Hive going forward. It is what led Oryx to return to the system and to enact his vengeance in the Taken King. It is what led to his death and downfall. It is what led to Savathun filling the power vacuum and wresting control of the Taken. And it is what led to this moment in Season of the Witch, where Eris Morn throws aside her bandage, revealing her eyes and embracing the power of the Hive for herself. From this one raid, this one story, the entire narrative of the Hive unfolds, both into the past and into the future. From this central point, our Guardians changed the fate of the system. Were it not for our actions in this raid so long ago, it's fair to say that Earth would have fallen by now and that the Witness would have conquered the Traveler uncontested. This raid set us up for success. It is the foundation upon which we used our power to defeat Oryx, to defeat Savathun, and to contest Zivor Wrath. In the dark below, that story began with Eris's return to the Tower. It leaves us in the second act of this play, just as we saw Crota resurging across the moon, his forces on Earth were also beginning to ascend. And so it was that we would need to fight them and destabilize his base of power. All Ascendant Hive exist thanks to the system of tithing tribute that has been established long ago by Oryx the Taken King. And so in order to blunt the offensive of Crota, we would need to go after his lieutenants. The fist, heart, eyes, might, and will of Crota. These powerful lieutenants were responsible for lending the Son of Oryx their strength, and none of them were more vicious than the will of Crota, though each of them was notable in their own regard. Their destruction was required in order to weaken him. With his brood laid low across Earth, and his plan to conquer Rasputin sabotaged, we would return to the moon and seek out the Chamber of Night, the ritual grounds where Crota was being summoned back 
into the material plane. We would enter this chamber and would stop the ritual before it could proceed, banishing Crota back into his own throne world. A victory at last, but it was only temporary. To avenge the first Crota fire team and to defeat the son of Oryx for good, we would need to do what Guardians had never done before. We would need to assault Crota's throne world and defeat him there at the seat of his power. If we could do so, we would end him once and for all. If we failed, our light would be snuffed out forever. And so it was, and so it is again. Once more, six of us will go down into the deep. And at the very bottom of the Hellmouth, where no light lingers, where only darkness reigns, you will bear witness to Crota's power. The chattering of the hive's claws and the gnashing of their teeth will be but a taste of the horror that awaits you. You must cross the keyhole, leaving our reality and entering Crota's. You must prove your power in the logic of the sword, and you must prove your right to wield the Hive's own axiom against them. One final word of warning before you go, just as Toland would have given to those that accompanied him down into the deep. Whenever in your travels you can avail yourself of the Hive's dark power, the power of the sword logic, you should make use of it. You enter into a world where their rule and will is law, and where their power is made manifest by Crota's mind. Obey the logic of the sword, and understand that the swords of the Hive are not blades alone, for they link wielder to victim, they link life to death. Understand that when the battle is done, the sword will remember and will grow stronger. Hold fast to this knowledge that the greatest authority in these spaces is a blade, one made keen by eons of use and the promise of finality. Crota's end is soon to be here. I'll have no video for you tomorrow as I'll also be raiding on the day one raid myself, but the day after, you can expect the first in a series of videos that, as requested, will be covering Crota's End in all the detail that we now have. We'll start with the story from its very beginning, most likely, with the act of Crota's Exile. We'll work forward until the point at which Crota cried out for the final time, and his father Oryx would answer. But that's all from me for now. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications and keep up with all the Destiny lore this season. And as we draw to a close, once again, really quickly, thanks again to our sponsor, War Thunder, which you can download for free. Go register with my link now. You get a large free bonus pack for using my link. It includes multiple premium vehicles, boosters and more. Also, if you have your own thoughts, go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. Is there anything in particular you want me to talk about with regards to Crota's End and the story of the first Crota Fire Team? Is there something that you want covered which you think has been missed on my channel? Or is there something in particular that puzzles you about the story of Crota? I'll be looking out through the comments to see what's going on. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside. <laughs>